We're going to now work with tag helpers. And to give us a contrast, we're going to look at the HTML helper extensions. So I'm going to create a form and using HTML helper extensions, and then I'm going to use tag helpers and basically create the same form. We're going to see the differences in the code that we create and then the code that's generated um, by ASP.NET. So down here, I'm just going to create another section and call it tag helpers. So this is in our razor page, by the way. And so we're going to create a form using the traditional ASP.NET way um, if you want to use the HTML helper. So I'll do a HTML begin form. I'm not going to put anything in there um, as far as the post type where we want to send it um, because that's fairly basic. But what I am going to do is just go ahead and create a few fields. We'll create a button and then we'll start doing some comparisons. So we want something for a label on this first one. So I'm going to give this name and just make use of some of the fills that we've created. So it's going to be an HTML uh, text box. And this is actually text box four. So we'll use that and I'm going to use a little bit of Lambda here and just do for model M dot ID, which is where we want it to go. And now we'll do a BR here and start our next one, which is just going to be for message. So we'll have HTML label again. This is going to be message and HTML. We're going to do another text box for. And this is, again, a Lambda expression we're going to do for message. Dot message. And I mean another BR. Okay, and that is all we're going to do um, as far as making use of variables. So now we'll go ahead and create a button, which is just going to be straight uh, HTML. Just going to use a type submit, value, submit, and submit. And then we'll look at the output of that inside of the browser after we've created our tag helpers. So actually, this is going to be HTML helpers. And we're going to call the one below it tag helpers. So I'll just copy this. And then down here, we can go ahead and start with tag helpers. So what we expect is really similarities in the output, but a lot of differences in how we're going to construct this. The big difference with tag helpers, you can basically use regular HTML um, without having to worry about using all these different extension methods. So it's more natural to use tag helpers. So our form tag here and I am going, and let me just back up a little bit on this. So if I'm going to do ASP, I'm not getting any kind of IntelliSense. And so I'm going to just type the rest of this. And the reason why is for tag helpers, we actually need a namespace inclusion. So going to the top of our page, we're going to add another, not a using, but this is going to be add tag helper. And we're going to do a star comma. So just a global and the namespace is just going to be Microsoft and ASP net core dot MVC dot tag helpers. And let's just save that. Scroll down. Okay, so notice now we're getting some differences here with even the coloring of this. So it's purple at this point signifying it's recognizing this is a tag helper. So I'm going to go ahead now and there's our IntelliSense and so just continuing this, I am going to do an index on the action. We're going to now set this up like a route. So the controller is going to be home and the method is going to be post. All right, close that off. Now we're going to create our input tags. So the first one we're going to have, we're just going to do a type text ASP and for, so that's similar to what we saw above. You can see the text box for, and we're going to do ID. We need an equal here, ID, and close. Then I'll do a BR. So the next one we're going to have is for message. So input type, text, ASP4, that's going to be for message. And we'll close, and another BR. And now what I want is to just go ahead and group these. So we're going to have form group 
and I'm using these classes form group that's coming out of Bootstrap, which we don't have, but that's what you would do in that case. So the grouping, uh, like this form groups, are nice whenever you need to have like a label and then you want to do the corresponding input box and you just group those two elements together. So for this one, I'm gonna do message two. So we'll have an ASP.NET 4. We're gonna have, not message two, but just do message again and close the label. Then below here, we're going to have our input ASP4, which is gonna be once again for message. And we're gonna do a class text danger. And notice here, I can just do class inline like that, which would require a bit more work up here if you want to use it inside of these HTML helpers. So let's just look at one of those. Say, for example, we want to do this on our text box four. So we do a comma here, a new, and in brackets, not a new string, but just in braces, I mean. And this would be an um, at class. So let's do this and then whatever that class is. So let's go with our, what can we use here? Text danger and close that off and just save. Okay, so we're gonna check that at runtime as well, but just going back to the point, it's more natural whenever you're using the tag helpers to accomplish that. And down here, I'm gonna add a little bit of a validation just to show how that works. So we can do ASP.NET, we do our dash validation for, and we'll just do message. Then we'll have our class here, which is actually I wanted to put text danger here. Notice we're getting hints even on those classes. If you maybe you didn't see where you can see there, we're getting, it knows what we may want. So we're getting those hints for our classes and I'll just close that span. This right here, I'm going to use control label. And this is complaining, it's saying missing close angle for tag helper and actually I'm missing a quote, I believe is what the whole issue is. So down here, I'm going to go ahead and just add a button. So we'll do a class. That's going to be another form group. Close that off. We'll put a button in here, just do a type again, submit. And we're going to do a value of submit. And then we'll close and add submit. So a little bit of differences in the HTML that we're gonna output because we do have these form groupings, but we'll still see what these input boxes will look like. So let's go ahead and run it and then we'll take a look at what we're getting. All right, so we need to go to our razor page and this one here is my razor page. Let's see, I think it is gonna want that eight right there. Okay, so here we are. And let's just take a look now at the output, the HTML. Go ahead and expand this. All right, so going up to the first one, and you can see here what we're getting on our output. So there's our class that we added, that text danger. And we, let's see, we have data value required. This is required field. Um, so really just what we'd expect on the output of the HTML. Then we go down here, and here's our tag helper inside of the form. Let's just unroll that. And you can see also the hidden field here for the request verification, that long string that's being injected by ASP.NET. But just starting at the top, so the HTML output's pretty much the same. You can see we have the data val required here. We've got our IDs as well. We have our label, if we go down a little bit more where we're grouping things together. So there's our label. And you can see there's nothing special being interjected into here as an attribute, um, as some weird artifact because of the fact that we used tag helpers. It's all translated very nicely into just regular HTML. And just open this last one up. There we go with our button. And this HTML is very clean as well. So basically getting the same kind of output, just an easier way, a more natural way to do it, basically is what you're getting with these tag helpers. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this. We're gonna look at one more example, and I'm gonna place it right here uh, below our tag. And this is going to be a hyperlink. And to do that, we're going to start with our A, we're very familiar with for Anchor. We're gonna do an ASP. We're going to use routing now. 
uh, just like we did with our form tag. So we're going to have an ASP um, action, which is going to go to index. We're going to have an ASP controller that's going to go to home. And then we can just close this off and say wherever we want to go. So go to home page, for example, and just put a line break here and save. And let's run this. All right, so we'll go to our page. And here's our hyperlink. Notice down here in the yellow, that hint that we're getting is actually pointing to our page, um, the root of the razor page. And so we get my var message is output because our parameter went away, that hyperlink. Let's take a look at it. Has nothing in it. So let's inspect. Just scroll up a little bit and we can see what's going on. So you can see here, it's just redirecting to the page without the parameter. So it's basically a refresh on this page. So why didn't any of our scaffolding come through for the routing that we've put in place here? Let's go take a look at our startup. So we have our use MVC, we have our add MVC, all of that's right. This right here is not really affecting anything, but let's just go take another look at this and go to that page and see what we get. So we have our, it's actually home index. We're back to our string, our MVC page didn't even come up. So if we take a look at the home uh, controller and we can see we actually did have that commented out. So we need to comment that out or remove the comments and save this. Now we can restart the app. That's gonna recompile. So basically what it means that Visual Studio knows um, at least in that route, even if it's commented out in the home controller, that we basically disabled MVC. So let's go ahead and bring our page back up. All right, and if we hover over it, now look, we have our route there. Let's go ahead and click, and we go to our page. So even that little bit there, although everything else was fine inside of the startup file, just that little bit, and Visual Studio was able to detect that MVC was not enabled basically because of the routing. So we weren't able to go anywhere and it shut off that href and made it just blank. So that is a look at tag helpers. And next what we're going to do is see how to integrate Bootstrap into this project and then just take a look at a regular project that already has Bootstrap ready to go for us.